Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just did a little bit of a breakdown of all of the craziness that can happen this upcoming season, how it's one of the more unpredictable seasons that I've seen in my lifetime for sure, but I think it goes back even further than that, if I'm being totally honest. But let's get into some of the top contenders' biggest four-game stretches. Obviously, this is going to be kind of just the moment where we realize this is a national title contender, not just a team that had that moniker going into the season. This is when they kind of realize that and become that team. So let's get into this and let's start with the Ole Miss Rebels. And I think for me, it starts at LSU on October 12th. We've talked about October 12th a ton on this segment. It's because there's a lot of really good games on October 12th, but just cannot wait for that week. But And also can wait for that week because that's week seven and it's halfway through the schedule. But that's beside the point. We'll get into that throughout the season. Um at LSU is absolutely huge. I talked about it with, um, I will talk about it with LSU here in a second. This is the game for both of these teams. I think this is the game where they separate themselves, where they say, you know, we're a little bit closer to the Texas and the Georgias and maybe even the Bamas of the world than we are to the Ole Misses of the world. This is kind of the separate pass. It could be the decider between, you know, who makes it between these two uh, teams because going into the season, you have Georgia, you have Texas, you have Bama leading the way for odds to win this conference. And then you have USC, uh, Ole Miss, and LSU. And those might be the two that break past. That might be uh, one gets left out at the end of the day, one gets in, and this could be the game that decides that. So absolutely huge for them and definitely a game that could be really, really interesting. Oklahoma coming to Oxford could not come at a worse time for Ole Miss, if I'm being totally honest. You have a very, very emotional game at LSU the year, the week before, and whether you win or lose, you're walking to that game with some different emotions than you'd like, and then o, uh, OU is going to be as motivated as ever. Whether uh, Whatever the schedule is going to be, whatever your record is at this very moment, they're a team that is going to walk in and give you 100% every single time, and this is a game that if Ole Miss wants to take that next step into the upper echelon of the SEC, these are the games that you win on a yearly basis. Maybe they nip you, you know, once every four or five years, but overall, these are the games that Alabama has made a living off just winning over and over and over again, whether it's Tennessee or it's Ole Miss or some of these other teams that have been lurking around. That's the reason that they have been so dominant because pretty much every time they walked into the building with Tennessee, it was a win. So that's obviously the big moniker here and what Ole Miss wants to do this year. And then going to uh, Arkansas would be totally fine if uh, UGA wasn't on the other side of it because that is the game that you are absolutely looking forward to the most with Ole Miss this year. And it's going to be impossible to keep these guys fully engaged in that game. It's not to say that they can't go in and get a big win and can't be focused enough to get that win, but it is to say this is the one where things could get a little bit sketchy for them. Um, if you walk into Fayetteville not fully prepared, they can jump on you pretty quickly and definitely be a very, very dangerous atmosphere to walk into. And then Georgia coming to town is it's where you ascend to the next level. It's, it's where you become not only a national title contender, but maybe the team that everyone expects to win it. Um, if you can have Georgia walk into your building and absolutely dominate them or at least get a win it doesn't necessarily matter how how well you play but if you can get a win on the board against Georgia you are in a really really good shape and overall I mean you're looking at it and Ole Miss has all of the pieces everything is in place for this team to be dangerous can they deliver uh it will be a very very interesting conversation and one way or the other we're gonna have a lot of very passionate Ole Miss fans at the end of the year uh and then you had LSU Starts at the exact same place. Uh, Ole Miss on October uh, 12th, same exact reasoning. They absolutely, if they're going to get this one done, or if they're going to get to the playoff, excuse me, they absolutely have to get this one done. No two ways about that. Going to Arkansas should be a fun one, definitely in the middle of a stretch that is going to be really tough for them. So could cause the same problems that it would for Ole Miss on the other side of this. So definitely will be one that they just have to take care of business, have to, you know, take care of the ball and keep it on moving. Um, Because if they do get tripped up in that game, that could be the difference between them and getting into the playoff. And then going to A&M is super interesting for a number of reasons. You do get a bye after this before the Bama game, which is very, very nice for LSU fans. But overall, I think this is one where you could get tripped up very easily. Walking into Kyle Field and not being able to guard a a deep pass, especially if someone like Connor Wegman really gets rolling this year, 
could be the death of this uh, or this team in particular. So I think it's one of those games that it is absolutely huge for LSU to win this one, keep moving, go into that bye week, and then into that Bama game with a lot of energy and a lot of momentum. And then the Bama game, you finally feel like you are able to beat this team. I understand that LSU has been one of the teams that has been able to nip uh, uh Alabama and Saban from time to time and definitely has played closer games with them throughout the years but overall this is the way that everyone feels about Bama going into this year they finally feel like they are attackable they finally feel like the boogeyman's gone and maybe they have a chance to make some noise against this team now do they it'll be really interesting to watch that but overall this one's going to be a lot of points and it's going to be really really fun to watch that's for sure um LSU has a chance to improve just a little bit defensively and make the college football playoff I think this offense is going to be really awesome and this is a stretch where if you walk out of it three and one or better you're in really good shape I'll just leave it at that definitely a team that could make some noise and if they go three and one in this stretch then they're making plenty of noise already um but then let's get into Clemson their starts after week one if you were to ask me because frankly if you are going to lose that opener to UGA which is where I'm leaning right now it could be a much closer game than I'm giving it credit for but right now I just see UGA on a little bit different of a plane than Clemson but right after that you got to bounce back you got to be ready to roll and App State is not rolling in there to lose I can almost promise you that they are a team that can play with a lot of teams across the country. Um, they're not necessarily on the physicality level of Clemson, and Clemson should be able to handle business. There's no two ways about that, but App State's coming in there with as much energy with nothing to lose, and if Clemson had just lost a uh, game to UGA and are a little bit down in the dumps, or on the other side, if they just won a huge game against UGA and are overlooking App State a little bit, this one could be a little bit more dangerous than it looks like on paper. And then NC State comes to town. That's obviously going to be a huge one for so many different reasons and might just shape the tone of this conference going forward throughout the year because if NC State pulls this one off, then both these schools, both these programs are moving in totally different directions. Maybe uh, NC State's heading on to an ACC title game. Maybe Clemson's heading on to a very disappointing season and making some fans pretty mad. But overall, this should be kind of a physicality gap type thing more than anything else. I think Clemson just has more dudes on the offensive and defensive line. So it should be a win, but it's one of those that you never really know what you're going to get out of NC State. And especially if they beat that team, uh, if they beat that Tennessee team in week two, then we're having a real conversation around this one when it comes around. Um, and then you have Stanford. Again, this one's a layup. It's I, I I love the Cardinal. I'm not trying to disrespect the Cardinal, but respectfully, if you're losing this game to Stanford this year, then you have no business being anywhere near the playoff or anywhere near an ACC title, and you won't be. So I think this is one where they just absolutely have to flex their muscles and just keep it moving because they got a huge game right after that. They go to Tallahassee to face uh, Florida State. It's the big one. It's been the big one the last three years in the ACC. It is absolutely the one this year. And if Clemson's going to make the noise they want to, this is the one they got to win. Um, so Clemson's under pretty much as much pressure early on in the season as really anyone with Georgia, NC State, Florida State all on the schedule. So they got to get off to a good start. I don't know if it's four and one or three and two that could keep them intact, but overall they got to at least get four or. It, I'm going to say they at least got to get four of these wins and at least got to be rolling into this season with a lot of confidence and at least this offense moving the ball really effectively. And then finally, let's get into Michigan here really quickly. And Oregon's coming to town on um, November 2nd, and this one's kind of just a message sender. This is the one where you can put the new kid back in his seat and say, you know, this is still our conference. Us and Ohio State are the class of this conference, and it's going to take longer than one year for you to pull this off. So this would be just a kind of message sender than anything else and let everyone know, including Oregon, that Michigan is still one of the class teams in this conference, and they're not just going to walk in and dominate dominate them right away. Going to Indiana is one of those games that frankly shouldn't be too big of a problem, but once you get down to November, Indiana could be a very different team than they are in September, and I think it could be a team that is a little bit dangerous and could cause some problems. I don't necessarily think it's going to be too big of a problem because the phys uh, physical nature of Michigan should get them to a win, but overall, it's definitely one that we should be watching just a little bit closer once it comes around. And then Northwestern should be a layup. It's definitely 
a team that is coming in with a lot of energy this year. David Braun has done an incredible job after being thrust in some not so great situations a year ago, but got six wins a year ago, did a really, really great job with that team. And it definitely has some questions going into this year for Northwestern, but you're going to get 110% of their effort. I can promise you that every single Saturday. So very much like this team, a really, really good team going into this year. And although Michigan should probably roll over them, I'm very excited to see what Northwestern can be. And then at uh, Ohio State, it's the big one. It's the one that you really want to win. If you can do the thing that absolutely pretty much everyone is picking against you in and beat this Buckeyes team for a fourth straight year, you would upset not only that team, not only those players, not only those coaches, not only that fan base, but you might just turn this program on its head for a little bit because there would be people asking for Ryan Day's job. There would be people asking for a million different things to happen around there, and it could cause a little bit of turmoil that is not too easy to come back from. So this could be the moment where Michigan kind of buries their opponent and does something that a lot of people, including myself, tend to believe that they can't do at this moment. But if they do it, it's going to be absolute turmoil in Columbus, Ohio. I can promise you that. So Michigan can send a message this year. There's no two ways about that. They can tell everyone, you know, everyone that's saying they don't have a shot to win the national title, everyone saying that they can't make a playoff run, that they're not the team that they were a year ago, and they're not. But they're still really good, and they absolutely have the ability to make some noise. So if they go 3-1 and one in those games, then... This is a team that absolutely can make the playoff, and then physicality might just take over. So it's going to be awesome to watch that team, one of those teams that is really, really hard to get a beat on how good they're actually going to be. But let's take our fourth break here, and when we come back, we're going to talk about some of the hot takes for the contenders in the SEC. We have worked our way through every single conference thus far, and now it's time for the SEC, and we'll get into that right after this. So stick with us.